Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, this is a new year, a new opportunity, a blessing to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, in our collective spirit and witness, be a blessing in thy sight. Thou who has been our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I greet you in the strong name of Jesus Christ with the love of God. And I greet those who are joining us online with the love of God for you this new year. I have excitedly uh, been uh, awaiting this opportunity to come preach here in Muncie. And I want to begin by asking you to keep your conference superintendent, the Reverend Russ Abel, in your prayers. He would have been here today were it not uh, for illness. Uh, COVID struck his home. Everybody is improving and doing well. Uh, and hopefully in a few days, he'll be able to be up and at it again. I want to begin with the words of the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who died in recent days. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. God's dream is that you and I and all of us will realize that we are family. I think that was the core of the children's message today. It is God's dream that you and I, we all would realize that we are all family, that we are made for togetherness, for goodness, and for compassion. Like Archbishop Desmond Tutu, I remain a prisoner of hope. Oh, I don't ignore all of the realities of life. I'm not pretending that every day is a good day or that people I have loved and you have loved have not passed away these last two years. That would be untrue. But I'm glad to be preaching at Community of Hope United Methodist Church. A new year, a new name, a new opportunity to advance the cause of Christ. Here in Muncie, and I like to say Greater Muncie, I drove through several other towns before I got to Muncie, and, and, and I'm assuming people don't all live just in, in, in Muncie. And I know there are a lot of Methodist churches, there are a lot of churches that people have an opportunity to join, but if you don't have a church, you may want to come to Community of Hope to begin this new year. Friends, there are some things that do not require legislative action. Some things that do not require prolonged debate or discussion. Unequivocal in its certainty, profound in its simplicity, God knows your name. Amen? Amen. Now, I have more to say about that, and I, I will not take long to say it. But this is good news. As my father-in-law would say after the reading of the scripture, he would say, let the word do the work. If you, have listened, if you listen to the reading with power, both from Pastor Keith and, and Daryl, uh, where's Daryl, who, who, who is the liturgist today, uh, you could travel with me anytime and read scripture. Uh, because my father-in-law would say, let the word do the work. And I don't know if you heard in, in, in both the Old and New Testament, God knows your name. This is good news. We don't have to vote on it. We don't have to get our congressional representatives to agree on it. We don't have to take it to annual conference or general conference. God knows your name and God loves you. God loves you. Bishop, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm dealing with. It doesn't matter. 
God knows. And God knows your name and God loves you. This is good news. Here Isaiah speaks to us from the 43rd chapter, the first three verses from the New King James Version. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. And then God claims ownership. I have called you by name. You are mine. There's nothing negative that anyone can say about me or about you that has any merit because God has already made claim on you and on me and said, you are mine. That's good news. Years ago, uh, I hit a barbershop when I was in Cleveland, Ohio. We lived there for 20 years. I served as a local church pastor and I had a regular barbershop that I went to and there were a number of uh, preachers who went to this barbershop Pastor Joe Primes, a United Methodist retired pastor, also attended the same, uh, same barbershop that I attended. He, he was a public school teacher as well as a local pastor in the United Methodist Church. And he was retired both from teaching and from pastoring, and he was faced with many health challenges. In fact, Pastor Joe Primes had been in the hospital multiple times I remember him coming into the barber shop after he had been in the hospital and released from the hospital after one of these many times he had come close to death. And someone said, Brother Primes, it's good to see you still with us. I remember Joe Primes saying, I'm not going anywhere until he calls me home by my name. By my name. God does not infer that God knows us. God says we are known. God does not imply that God loves us. God declares that we are loved. I have loved you, says the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Jeremiah says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. No expiration date. Jesus says to the gospel writer John, God, God so loved the world. The gospel writer John says it. God so loved the world, everybody, that God gave God's son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have everlasting life. God knows your name and your name has been recorded. John Wesley says, love is the very image of God. It is the brightness of his glory, love. And this Sunday, oh, it's a good Sunday. Well, it's a new year. First time we've gathered as the community of hope, in this worshiping space. It's a good Sunday. It's the baptism of the Lord Sunday. It's a time to remember our baptism. By biblical scholars are in agreement that Jesus' baptism by John is one of the most certain historical facts about Jesus. Jesus came not as a sinner nor a seeker, but as our Savior in fulfillment of God's will. The Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all present at Jesus' baptism. And as Christians, all are declared to be God's children in the act of baptism. So Jesus was declared the Son of God when he was baptized. The scripture reading, a voice from heaven said, this is my Son whom I dearly love. The common English version says, I find happiness in him. The New Revised Standard Version says, This is my son whom I love, in whom I am well pleased. One of my great joys and privilege as a bishop of the church is to preach at churches and to share the good news of God and to encourage people 
with the saving, redeeming love of Jesus Christ. I also get to baptize children at annual conference, children of the clergy of the annual conference. And on occasion, I participate in baptisms in local churches in conjunction with the local pastor of that church. I baptize adults and renew baptisms in the Jordan River, the Holy Land. Seven years, my wife and I, we've led groups to the Holy Land. And one of the high points of that experience, and if you have an opportunity, we'd love to have you travel with us to the Holy Land, to the land of Jesus. One of the high points is going to the Jordan River, the same body of water in which Jesus was baptized. And to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or to have people experience renewal of baptism in the waters of the Jordan. I look forward to doing that again. I remember the last time we were there after we had experienced the service of baptism in the Jordan River, there were others coming from other groups who had traveled there, from other countries. They saw me baptizing along with several of the pastors, baptizing persons in the Jordan River, and they too wanted to be baptized. And one of the questions that is always asked, whether it's a child or an adult, what name has been given this child or this candidate to be baptized? And I repeat their name before we do the baptism, saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Dear friends, dear beloved, as you begin 2022 as the people of God, never fear. We are not inconsequential. We are children of the Most High God. Reverend Jennifer Copeland from North Carolina, the author of this past week's devotions in the Upper Room Disciplines, uses the baptismal covenant in her daily devotions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, the questions that are asked? Do you reject the evil powers of this world? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior, put your whole trust in his grace? Do you, community of hope, accept freedom and power God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever form it takes? According to grace given to you and to me, will we serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Our baptism is connected to the great commission that Jesus gives in Matthew 28. Go to all of the world. Make disciples of Jesus Christ. Allow me to close with two words, grace and hope. Two words that are important as we begin our witness in 2022 here at Community of Hope. Grace and hope. As followers of the one who did for us what we could not do for ourselves, we are made stronger through both grace and hope. The dictionary says grace is uh, unmerited favor. Theologians say grace is salvation and forgiveness that's not earned or deserved. But I like to use my spiritual imagination when I talk about grace. And I want to share with you that I believe God has a printing press in heaven. And in that printing press, God is making name tags. I don't know if you're going to have new name tags for everybody who becomes a part of the community of hope. But here's my name tag plate from the conference. God has a printing press in heaven and he's making name tags for every single person with your name on it. Mine says Julius C. Trimble, but on the back of your name tag is stamped, loved by God. Loved by God. Nothing anyone can do or say that can revoke your name tag that has been made in heaven with your name on it. God has recorded your name. 
I know you. I love you with an everlasting love. Disciples are made of stronger stuff. Able to withstand the temptation to put self ahead of neighbor, profit ahead of justice, or fear before faith. We are able to withstand the temptation to think we are more important than our neighbor. We don't blow away because of the winds of change, because the challenge of COVID, or the sheer reality of the ups and downs of life. We hold fast to the call to follow Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors of hope, messengers of love. God has a mission in the world for this church, for every church. And love is at the center of that mission. Now some say the feeling of hope is a positive sense of the future. The belief of hope, the understanding that this is a worthwhile future to feel positive about. In the words of author Emily Barnes, the impulse of hope is the stubborn need to move forward. We can keep going forward. The relationship of hope is a restful, energizing connection with the one who is the hope of the world, Jesus Christ. Hope grows when you invite the God who made you, the Christ who redeemed you, the Holy Spirit who surrounds you, the triune God to speak to and through both your head and your heart. We are community of hope. Repeat after me. We are community of hope. One more time. We are community of hope. And the best of all, God is with us. Oh, that will, that will preach. You ought to preach that sometime. The best of all is God is with us. Those are the words of John Wesley and words of your bishop. I encourage you with the love of Jesus Christ to rise and serve to your highest potential. I encourage you not to be discouraged or dismayed because God has recorded your name. I never will forget. One Sunday after church, I was shaking hands this was before COVID, you know, when we could shake hands and hug and all of that. Uh, and uh, people would say, I would say, how, you know how people say, how are you doing? And we, we perfunctorily say, I'm doing fine. Because people are waiting in line to, to, to speak to the pastor as they're leaving to go to lunch. Uh, and one lady said, Pastor, I said, how are you doing? She said, Pastor, I'm doing fine if you don't ask for details. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. Most of us can say that some days we are doing fine, but do you really have time for all of the details of my life? God has time for the details because your name has been recorded in heaven. Your name, your name tag has already been printed with your name on it, and it's been stamped, loved by God, no expiration date. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may God bless Community of Hope, United Methodist Church. Amen.